let's take a look at mind control. What is mind control? The simplest way to explain it is someone else owns your mind. They own you. They've got you behaving per their desire, the way they want you to behave. They do that, as we'll see, by virtue of having programmed your thoughts and beliefs, having gotten you to believe what they want so that you act in a certain way according to their desire, not based on your own free will not based on your own choices. So essentially, your mind ceases to be your property and now it's, it's no longer your property because you're allowing someone else to program it. I talked about the programmable nature of human beings in my presentation called Understanding Human Nature. And if you haven't watched that one, you may wanna go back and watch that first because it has a lot of really foundational knowledge that's gonna help you to better understand what we're talking about today. The bottom line is, when you're under mind control, someone else basically owns you because they can get you to act and behave the way they want. And folks, I'm just gonna say it plainly and loudly, we're all under mind control to some extent in this world. We're all under mind control. The only thing that makes a difference is the degree to which we have recognized that is true, recognize the truth of that, and that we've taken back control of our minds by either deprogramming what has already been programmed or basically saying no to new forms of programming that others are attempting to put into our minds. No one can escape this completely. It is a pervasive aspect of their current human condition. It's also really important to understand that mind control is a long game. This is not something that is only going to happen very quickly. For example, you've probably seen those videos where someone gets hypnotized. A hypnotist, a theatrical hypnotist might do perform a few tricks, get somebody to act in a certain way. Yes, that is that can happen, but mind control as we're discussing it is a very long process. It's happening over generations. It's happening where one generation gets programmed in a certain way and then they actually help to propagate that programming to the next generation, almost like propagating a mental virus. It's also happening ubiquitously, meaning it's happening everywhere. We're constantly being bombarded by it. It's coming through all the different media channels. It's, it's everywhere. It's literally pervasive. And this is part of how and why it is so successful in the context of getting people to believe that taxes are right or anything like that. So it's really important to understand that this is a, this is a phenomenon that is happening globally and ubiquitously. A truly moral person will never agree to do anything against their will. A truly moral person, a person who owns themselves, who owns their mind, who makes their own decisions, they're not going to agree to do something that they know is wrong and is, it goes against their will. So how are people convinced to pay taxes? In order to do so, someone has to be convinced that wrong is right. I mean, isn't that incredible? To get someone to agree to pay taxes and to think in their mind that they're doing the right thing, they must be convinced that wrong is right. So how is this done? How do you literally have the majority of human beings buying into this system and willingly giving up their property. The only way to do that is to manipulate people's beliefs about taxation, about whatever, about taxation specifically or whatever concept you want to control their behavior. So we need to create a whole different way of thinking about taxation in order to generate this behavior on a massive scale. And here's the point. 
what they're doing specifically, the manipulators, is they are inverting the truth. They are inverting it to be the opposite of what it actually is. So the new belief system that they're instilling in people's minds is paying taxes is the right and moral action. I mean, just think about that for a second. Just let that sink in. This is the belief that they're instilling in people. When you pay taxes, you're doing the right thing. You're acting morally. You're fulfilling your civic duty. You're doing something for the greater good. You're making a good sacrifice. Whatever the variation is, whatever the different flavor or nuance that you want to add to it, the bottom line is that, that the manipulation is to get you to believe that you're doing the right thing when you act immorally. So it's a complete inversion of the truth. Now, to, to adequately and, and a properly cover the topic of mind control would be an entire presentation in and of itself. In fact, it would probably be multiple presentations minimum. It's a very big topic. So I'm not going to be able to cover that. Uh, I'm already just stating that I'm not going to be able to cover it in that level of detail today. So I'm just going to make some mention of a few of the main ways that mind control is implemented. And then I'm going to leave it to you to further your study. Um, and I encourage you to do that. I don't want you to just take my word for it. Just like with all my work, I'm not here to get you to believe anything I say. This is all, I'm just sharing this knowledge with you and then inviting you to go research it on your own. But let's just mention briefly some of the methods of mind control. So trauma, especially trauma in early childhood, is one of the main ways of instilling, of controlling the mind and of creating a more pliable mind, a mind that is willing to accept instructions and knowledge and beliefs, even though they are contradictory to nature. You've probably, you all have certainly heard of sexual ritual abuse. Uh, it's something that's done again, mainly in childhood, but it can be done really at any time in life. Repetition. I would say repetition is probably the most ubiquitous and most successful form of mind control of all time of all time. It's, it's probably number one. Just keep repeating the lie over and over and over and over and over again from all different directions, everywhere. Every time you turn on the television, every, everywhere you walk down the street, wherever you see a, a sign or a billboard, and then other people repeating it because repetition works not just through the media, but as people take on these beliefs, people become repeaters. So they are actually repeating it. So repetition is a wildly successful form of mind control, more than you can imagine. Religion. And when I say religion, I'm not referring just to cultural religions, although we can take those in context, the exoteric versions. I'm referring to the concept of religion. Now, just like all occult concepts, religion has both a positive and negative interpretation. I'm referring to the negative interpretation where the consciousness is bound back, is, is tied back, is held back. So basically a collection of beliefs that are accepted unquestioningly. And folks, religion is everywhere. Religion is one of the biggest problems that we face in this world today. Obfuscation, confusing one thing with another. Again, taxation. Confusing, confusing taxation, what it actually is, theft, with what it is not, a morally good behavior or a civic duty. But we see this in other concepts as well. For example, think of words like anarchy. People think anarchy means chaos when in fact it means no rulers, no masters. So obfuscation is a very powerful technique. Exploitation of fears pushing people's buttons, triggering people, getting people to react a certain way because you're tapping into their deep primal fears, including the fear of death, fear of death, fear of being exposed, all the primal fears, fear, fear of, of not surviving. 
So because people are afraid of what might happen to them, you can get them to behave in a certain way. Indoctrination. This is why the public education system is such a mainstay to perpetuating this system and the current state of, of suffering that we're all going through because people are being indoctrinated. Indoctrinated into what? Principally into the belief that a belief in authority, the belief that human beings may have a right to rule over others under certain circumstances. Dialectics. This is where you have one side versus another or a false choice, basically. You have false choices, free will versus determinism and so forth or pitting people against each other because of their skin color or some other aspect. So dialectics is a huge aspect of mind control. And there's so many more. So how does this relatively small group of people manage to control the minds of so many people? How is mass mind control implemented? Well, the answer is it's done through social engineering. And social engineering has also been called the hidden hand that guides civilization and the development of society. You will no doubt have already heard of many of the think tanks that are in the public domain. They are, they are public facing. I'm referring to think tanks like the Tavistock Institute, the Council on Foreign Relations, the World Economic Forum, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, the G20, and so on and so on. Some of them are more well-known, some of them are less well-known, but they are all in the public domain, and in fact, their plans are always published publicly. They're always published in a way that any person can discover them. And there's a very important reason for that, I'm not going to dive in too deep into this in this presentation, but I'll just mention that at the highest level, they know how natural law works. They understand how this reality operates, the operating conditions of this reality. In order to avoid the karmic repercussions, they need to obtain our consent. So that's why they always publish their plans before they, before they actually execute them. Because they consider that a form of acquiring our consent for their actions. And the way social engineering done is done is actually very simple. It's done over a long period of time, but the idea is you cultivate certain ideologies within the think tanks, and then you go and send out your people to implement it. So you infiltrate the different institutions of the world, whether they be cultural, including media and entertainment, the music industry, public education, whatever it is. And you start to place your people within those organizations and they start to propagate the ideology. So an example in public education is if you look at how public education has evolved or devolved, Notice how it went from liberal arts, classic education, more than 100 years ago, and over the last, say, 100 years or so, it's devolved into what it is today, which is the so-called outcome-based education. And that has happened, that process was eroded over time. So when I was in high school, it was already being implemented, but now, today, it's implemented even to a more massive scale. And that's social engineering. It's not an accident. It's not something that just evolved naturally or by chance. It's all done very deliberately. So social engineering is the way, it is, is, it's not the only way, but it is a way in which the minds of people are shaped to take on certain beliefs civilization-wide over long periods of time. In fact, all of the mainstream institutions that exist, all of them that you can name, they are all instruments of social engineering. They are all tools of shaping the minds of people to think in a certain way. 
to take on the beliefs of the ruling class, of this occultic priest class, of whom we will be talking about more in a few minutes. You can verify this for yourself just looking at the nature of these institutions and how they operate. It comes right back to that same concept of inversion. All these institutions, they are inversions of the truth. And this is related to the, uh, the hermetic principle of correspondence because they propagate lies and inversions and they themselves are an inversion. So they are a reflection of what they propagate. So banks, they rob you. Medicine keeps you sick. The news doesn't inform you about the truth. It tells you lies continuously. The government does not protect you or, or grant you freedom. It enslaves you. Public schools do not teach you how to think or empower you to gain knowledge. They indoctrinate you into the belief systems that they want you to have. And the police do not protect your freedom. They steal it away from you. They rob you of your freedom. And so on and so forth. All of the institutions in the mainstream that you can name without exception exist as an inversion of what is true, what is right, and ultimately what is good. 